Today, I speak with a former CNBC reporter that has interviewed some of the top entrepreneurs in the world with brands that you all recognize. She shares some advice that she heard from them, but since she is now a very successful entrepreneur in her own right, she also shares her journey and what she's learned along the way that you'll be able to apply to your own business as well. Are you looking for new ways to make your sales grow? You've tried other podcasts, but they don't seem to know. Harvest the growth potential of your product or service as we share stories and strategies that'll make your competitors nervous. Now, here's the host of the Harvest Growth Podcast, John LeClaire. Welcome back to the show. Today, I'm really excited to be speaking with Barbara Booth. She is the co-founder and CEO of Go Be Sleeves. We're going to talk about exactly what that product line is, what it does, how she came up with it. It's a really cool product, super unique, and can help a lot of us. If you're a traveler ever, right? if you're flying airplanes or in you know, could be trains and buses, that kind of thing as well. It's a great product that you'll want to consider, but also a great uh, story, business story behind it as well. But first of all, I want to welcome to the show, Barbara. Thank you so much. It's great to be here. So tell us about the Gobi sleeves, these airplane tray covers. What are they? How do they work? Oh, sure. So they are airplane tray covers that fit on universally coach seats in the airplane, and they are antimicrobial. Um, they're eco-friendly because they're made out of post-consumer BPA-free plastic from the oceans and some from landfills. And um, they contain this antimicrobial technology that's non-toxic and non-irritating and hypoallergenic. So it's safe for you and the planet too. And, um, you know, the way we came up with these is um, because initially it was all about the germs on the airplane. You know, you hear so much about that. And um, it sort of sparked back in 2018 when my very good friend, who's now the co-founder, Cornelia Quinn, came to me over dinner one day and she was talking about how she was so worried about the germs on the airplane tray tables because her son, who was battling leukemia at the time and also um, has autism, always came down with a bacterial infection two days after he got off the plane. And she came to me because I was a CNBC reporter at the time and said, you know, I know you're always investigating different things. And could you look into it? I really think it's the germs on the tray table. So I said, sure, I'll look into it and and see what I can find out. And I interviewed airline personnel, flight attendants. I talked to researchers. And what I found was pretty shocking. Um, I came to find out that the dirtiest part of the airplane, the germiest part, is the tray table. It's actually eight times germier than the lavatory flush button. So that was huge, uh, really huge uh, to hear that. And that um, flight attendants would tell me that they would rarely, if ever, sanitize these um, tray tables. And that's because, you know, um, the luster of the airline industry has really changed, you know, since way back in the, in the 60s, right? When, when um, people started flying, right? When people started flying, uh, the legroom in the planes basically were 34 inches apart, right? So you had lots of legroom, um, time to clean the planes in between, you know, meal service on the plane. So it was really a luxurious uh, fashionable time to be flying. And it was a kind of a fashionable thing to do. And um, since then, right today, we have about 28 inches between the seats. And because of deregulation, uh, airlines are offering lower fares, more people are flying. And, you know, just in the US alone, there's 2.65 million people that fly every day. So they don't have time to, to clean the planes in between. So in my investigation, finding this out was was pretty shocking. And on top of it, um, because of the the germs on the tray tables, people are using so many single use disinfectant wipes, and they're going into our landfills. And most of them are made of synthetic fibers that never decompose, and they have harmful toxins. So we came up with this product that's not just an airplane tray cover, but something that's a lifestyle accessory that will brighten up your space and make the experience so much better. And, um, you know, something, taking it from a sterile environment to something that's, that's blissful with all of the designs. And, and we're doing it by leveraging our creativity and our designs and making them beautiful. 
I love that concept. And, you know, you and I were talking before the interview, how your marketing story has evolved a bit over time where it was originally focused on the fear factor, which is real, right? I, I, right. You did not mention the, the stat. I think you said eight times more germs or more bacteria on the tray table than there is on the laboratory flush. That's crazy right. and kind of scary, right? But it's, right. it's I can certainly see that you people are eating, they're touching their mouth and their yes. mouths have, are bacteria focused. And then you've moved to this sort of lifestyle, right? So it's, it's of course, it's protecting you still from germs, bacteria, et cetera. But it's, I love how you worded it. Uh, how you make your space, I can't remember how you said it exactly, but it's like making it homey, right? It, it, it yes. makes it comfortable, which try, flying on a plane can be kind of dreadful, right? It's this tiny yes. little area. You're like pulling your elbows in so you're not touching the person next to you. And right. I, I love that aspect of, of making it just feel like a, a piece of home. So how, how has that like changed? Yeah, a good way to put it. So how is how is your messaging changed over time? I guess, and how has that helped you as you've grown your business? Mm -hmm. So it has changed greatly. Uh, we started 2021 and it was really based on, you know, oh, there's so many germs on the plane. You have to clean the space. You could get ill. There's a lot of infectious diseases that can be transferred. And all of that is true. But we are a brand that's has an uplifting voice and that's how we want to be. So we want to um, be a brand that makes you feel good. And, you know, there's a cultural shift toward toward wellness and, and um, wellness and health and, and just feeling good. Right. People love to have candles and their, you know, their hand soaps and just feeling warm and fuzzy. And that's the messaging that we are using now. We're saying, you know, uh, upgrade your space to the best space that it can be. Even if you're in coach, feel like you're in first class. Um, so that's where our messaging is going. I love that. It's funny. I worked with a client many years ago that had a similar pitch, you know, turning coach into first class. It was very different than the trade table. It was more about like a comfort, like getting a seat cushion or whatever. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, as we tried to test it and work it out, it's like, it's kind of more comfortable, but you still are like are shoved into this ugly little space or whatever. So I think what, the way you've done this, the visual aspect of it is mm -hmm. I think better, a lot better, right? It's, it just makes it feel fear. It makes it feel like you're in a better place um, as, you're, as you're flying, which none of us typically anymore love to be on a plane. <laughs> Traveling is great, right? It's the journey that isn't always that great and exactly. coach especially. Exactly. And, you know, we have the classic collection and the classic collection started off with a lot of our iconic um, symbol, which is the hexagon. And we have that symbol because in nature um, in an, and in architecture, when you put the cells of a beehive, which are the hexagons, right, together, and it makes the honeycomb shape, or in a building, when you put the cells that are shaped like a hexagon together, those 120 degree angles that support each other are the strongest, they, they create unimaginable strength. And so we feel that if people are mindful of each other, um, and, uh, you know, come together and, and try to be good to the planet as well and just really have the same mission will be a stronger world. And, and so we believe in unity. Um, and so that's the reason behind our hexagon. And you'll see that in a lot of our classic covers. So we then decided why not establish different lines? So we went into a kid's collection, which is really, really fun, um, has jungle patterns and alphabets. And so it's kind of a way for kids to be able to come onto the plane and, and be distracted by these beautiful covers. And the mom feels great because she's putting them on, you know, and, you know, obviously taking care of her child. Um, so we came out with the kid's collection and that's amazing. It's doing amazingly well. And now we're doing something that's really, really um, really different, but so exciting. We are collaborating with galleries all over the globe to reach out to local artists to design what they believe is an interpretation of some of the most popular destination hotspots in the world. And so they'll submit these in sort of a competition and um, we will pick which ones and these will become our My Happy Place collection. So it's become quite a giftable. I love that. And thinking about the hexagon design too, I know with your two pack, you give an included case that's hexagon shaped as well, a hard case you can attach to your luggage. And if you know people in our audience are thinking about well, what do you do with this when you're done with it, right? It goes right back right. in that case, you attach it to your bag or put it inside your bag and 
it's a great uh, design as well. So I'll, we'll talk more about this at the end, but I you know, encourage our audience to go to check out uh, your website, which is go B G O B E sleeves. Dot com. You can check out this full line, see the cool artwork that's done on these, these designs, as well as the case that you can get with the two-pack. So let's talk about the business side of it now. So you've got this great product and it's launched really in 2021, right? 2021. Mm -hmm. What's really helped your business to grow so quickly? What's worked well for you? So, um, well, I guess at the beginning, it was um, a little bit of word of mouth that started the first day we launched. It was, uh, we sold 150 in the first day. And the first person that bought our product was actually the UPS person or the USPS person that I had called to find out about shipping. And she said, what is your product? And I told her that I have to, when are you launching? I need to get that. Um, so, and she was, she was the very first person that bought our product. And so, you know, in the beginning, it was just a little bit of word of mouth. Um, and, and then uh, we did, we started doing some digital campaigns. Um, our mistake was that we tried to scale so fast right out of the gate. And we hired a consultant um, who was recommended to us by a friend. And she was a major executive for an ad agency, a huge ad agency in New York City. And she basically tried to build a tank and we really needed to be scrappy in the beginning. And we had, um, you know, we had a, a good amount of funds between myself and my co-founder. Um, we were pretty flush in the beginning. and. Um, you know, it was great. We were excited. Uh, you know, she hooked us up with a website designer, uh, very, very expensive, it turned out to be. And, and you know, now you have to go to um, this very big expensive agency in New York. And we did this big photo shoot. And then you have to do a sizzle video and you have to. And by the time we had done all of that and we were ready to launch, we were almost broke at that point. And so we thought, oh, my goodness. So in the beginning, it it just started to roll from the digital media campaigns and and um, some word of mouth and, and some Facebook boosting on our own. And then we sort of had to put the brakes on. Um, but not before Shark Tank reached out to us, which we were only three months old. And we thought, this is amazing. You know, we're only three months old. How could they be reaching out to us already? But they found out. So some of our digital campaigns helped us um, to grow awareness. Um, so it was really quick at first until we started to get short on cash. And we had to sort of put on the brakes and we decided to go and, and hire this mentorship company. It's a, it's a mentorship program. And I think it's a great thing for people to do when they're first starting out um, and they're, you know, in the early stages. And it's because we decided we don't want to be paying everyone else for website design every time we needed to get our website tweaked or, you know, we needed to become empowered and to control our own um, company. So uh, we decided that we needed to get the best offer out there. We had to learn how to do the right messaging. And when that started, um, that's when things started to grow. And then Gromit found us. So once we were on Gromit, that really catapulted us into uh, sales. Um, we just started growing exponentially. That's great. Let's talk about Gromit a little bit. It's uh, We've had a, a couple of guests on the show that have had success on the Gromit. It can be a great platform. And uh, I remember years ago, uh, it used to be very different. The Gromit from three, four, five years ago, for any of our listeners, and Barbie, you're probably aware as well, it was a very different company back then. They would they would shoot the videos for you. It was almost like an online catalog, and and uh, it, they had a ton of funding behind it, and they went away. It, it shut mm -hmm. down for a few months and came back. And the program's a little bit different now, but can, it's different, but it can be very successful at helping to drive growth for a brand new or new newish product like yours. How does it work with Grumman? So if you just kind of help our audience understand how it works and how it's been helpful for you. Sure. So you apply to Gromit and uh, once they accept you, then they ask you to send in lots of images and, um, you know, video. And they have such a great team. They put it all together for you, but they are using all of your assets. And um, they're just right on uh, right on point when it comes to your messaging. You write all of the copy, um, but they can they help you with it a little bit. Somehow they really catch on quickly. Their team is really great. Um, so they have a launch day 
every Thursday and they have over 2 million subscribers on Gromit. So the night before they say, you know, the launch is coming and on launch day, everybody that's a subscriber pretty much knows that launch day is Thursday and the 20 new products that are new innovative products that they've picked out um, are launched and they have great Instagram. Um, let's see, they're on Instagram and email blasts and they really reach their customer base and then their customers vote because a community driven platform, their customers vote. And so you want to be the product of the week. So you kind of drive that you, you yourself drive the traffic. You, you know, you tell everyone, you know, on your social media platforms, I'm on Gromit. I want to be product of the week. Cause once you're product of the week, you know, they have a, you know, a menu, um, bar that says product product of the week. And people seem to go to that, that menu bar, right. They click on that. Um, so we also put on our own website, you know, we're on Gromit. If you want 20% off, you know, go to Gromit. So we're helping each other because Gromit's trying to close to um, increase their customer base. And so, and at the same time that we're trying to get sales, right. So we're kind of helping each other. So the more people we drive to Gromit from our own website, they're being helped and we're being helped by sales. So, um, you know, you offer a discount. So we offer 20% off for Grom if you vote upvote us on Gromit. And that's what we did. And we did win product of the week. So that was just amazing because then after that, they showcased us again and then they did a maker video on us and, you know, that will be coming out soon. So um, it's been fabulous marketing and it hasn't cost us a penny. Yeah, it's, it's, you know, if for our listeners, it's kind of like the old school printed catalogs in some ways, right? Like you, they've got this list or this audience of followers, 2 million, as you mentioned, the people that are interested in new products, it's, you know, you get access to their audience by adding yours as well, and by adding a great product when they, when they accept you. So it can be a good tool as part of your marketing arsenal, part of your overall marketing program as well. Well, I'll post a, a link to the, you mentioned your mentorship program you've been a part of that's been helpful too. And I think it's a good thing. We've talked about similar things on our, our, our show in the past for especially early stage businesses when you're, you know, you may not have the funds to do everything with, and you and really shouldn't with the most expensive resource of every, every piece of it, right? Getting off the ground and launched and learning mm -hmm. um, should be done fairly efficiently, right? It's all about the goal of learning and getting to profits, right? So the faster you can do that, and then you can afford to go to the next level, the next stage, et cetera. You've got to bring in sometimes experts to help with different aspects where you may not be mm -hmm. the best at, but find out what you can do. And these mentorship programs can be good. The one you mentioned is, you told me about it, it's called For Good Profits. We yes. can put a link to that in the in the show notes as well. People want to check that out. Early stage, great thing to I, we I've, I've mentioned on our show in the past, or part of a mastermind where I work with other marketing agency owners that are not direct competitors to our to us, but it's you learn from them, right? We go through mm -hmm. similar trials, struggles, et cetera, and we can really help each other out with with resources, et cetera. So yes. a good thing to think about for sure. So we is also there anything? Go through, oh, go ahead. We also go through score. Um, score. We're, I'm out of Massachusetts, so we go through Score of Boston, um, and they've been wonderful because those are all free resources of people that are retired that have great expertise, and so they've been amazing as well. Yeah, and I can't remember what the SC stands for, but for our audience, if you haven't heard of it, it's of retired executives, right? Uh, do you know what the SC stands for in Score? Uh, something, no, I'm not something, sure. something. <laughs> we'll say something, something of retired executives. So it is this resource of people that really just want to give back, and it's it's uh, can be very helpful, and really at any stage uh, for startups as well as you know even ongoing or, or growing businesses. Well, Barbara, this has been a, a fun interview. Is there anything I didn't ask you that you think would be helpful for our audience? Um, you know, I um. As when I was a CNBC reporter, one of my tasks was to interview some of the most inspiring entrepreneurs of our time. And that's, I, I always had the entrepreneurial bug, but um, that even fostered it even more. And hearing their stories, you know, people like Sarah Kaus of the Swell Bottle and, and Sarah Blakely of Spanx and Eric Ryan, who discovered Method, you know, they gave such great wisdom so I thought I would just jump in feet first and, you know, this is all going to be great and it would all work out fantastically. And 
I learned quickly that there is so much more that goes into it. You know, you have to start out slow. You can't start out fast at the gate. And the one thing that Eric Ryan had said to me was that you need to focus on the second swing of the bat, not the first, because the first swing is all about learning how to win. And it's, you know, you, you have to spend the time, you have to come up with the concept, come up with the messaging and, and just pilot, pilot, pilot and launch and learn. And um, that's so true, but I didn't get it until I was totally involved and in it feet first. And there wasn't going back at that point. So, you know, it's all a great learning experience and um, we're learning every day but we've come so far from two years ago and we're just super happy. Well, thank you. I'm so glad you shared that. That's great advice for sure. I do want to encourage our audience, please go to gobsleeves.com to learn more. Uh, Barbara, Barbara's great product. It'll be in the show notes as well. If, if you're driving, don't worry about writing it down, go back to the show and, and check it out later. I uh, see the great product and, and coming soon product as well as, as you mentioned. Well, thanks again, Barbara. Thank you. So also, I want to mention to our audience, did you know you can meet with a member of my team absolutely free for a 30-minute consultation? We've launched and grown hundreds of products since 2007 and learned some of our strategies while growing OxyClean back in the Billy Mays days. We're here to help, so please go to harvestgrowth.com to set up a call if you'd like to discuss further. 